two points. Thank you. I enjoyed that um, very much. And you, you kind of answered my first question, which is, was going to be, does epigenetics become a, a kind of a archaeogenetic writing for Derrida? But um, to, to put it... Uh, so I, I still think there's some nuancing to be done here for a... Gerald, slow because I have some problem to understand. Okay. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll break this down into two questions then. The first one um, pertains to uh, how much with epigenetics can we really say that the genetic program is learning from experience? Because... Um, as I imagine you know, there is considerable debate amongst epigeneticists whether uh, the, the epigenetic uh, protein shifts are really to do with environmental learning or whether they're not just random adaptations of switching on and off. Um, that means that learning isn't really taking place. Um, the second uh, point I wanted to make was really... Um, you mentioned apoptosis, programmed mm. cell death. Um, and uh, kind of, this is a, a more tenuous speculative point, but to, to make a connection, uh, John talked about uh, sacrifice in, in, in relation to the previous paper. Um, and I wonder whether we might make an analogy between, uh, or, or set up a continuum that would begin with apoptosis. Um, and would culminate in sacrifice, where each of them might be read I in Derrida's sense of the decision of the other in me, um, where in the sense of epigenetics it would just be that switching on and off of genes, but where taken further along the continuum in, in the direction of epiphylogenesis, we'd start to talk about sacrifice in the way that, that Balnard does, as the pharmacological cost or opportunity mm. cost of having uh, technical organs refunctionalize biological organs in different ways where something is a, a function shift is gained or lost in, in each time that this gets undertaken. Thank you, Gerald. And, and I think it is not, not only two questions. There are many questions, and I think that we have to organize another symposium to only to answer. <laughs> no, but it, uh, I, I try. Uh, on, on the first point, um, there, the, what is really uh, astonishing in the epigenetic research, what is doing a, a spectacular uh, effect, is the case of the Dutch famine in the Second World War. Uh, it is, uh, in, uh, for the uh, reason linked a bit uh, between the Minister of uh, Wealth in uh, Dutch, we have all the, oh, the majority of the data about the pregnancy in uh, uh, Dutch. And they observe that the woman exposed to famine during the, in a, a certain region where was really uh, a, a terrible famine, was pregnant and they give uh, birth to um, uh, male that have tendencies to take weight, to be fat, and female to don't take weight. And what was interesting that these, after the, the offsprings, during their life uh, are not exposed to the famine, but transmit these tendencies, male, female, to uh, their offsprings. This is a, a case of uh, environment influence and a transgenerational. There is a case interesting too in the case of uh, the, the, the care of the parents of the uh, rats. Uh, that means that uh, if you, an experiment, if you take off the uh, offsprings uh, of, uh, of the mother of the rats, the, uh, the, the care of the mother uh, activate methylation that uh, induce the uh, production of the color of the 
pillow, yeah. hair. And this is another, another effect because the, the offspring without mother, that means without the care, without the caress, uh, I don't know, they <coughs> are uh, white, but the other are brown. And the offspring of the brown reproduce these uh, tendencies. There, is, there, are, there are many, many experiments that, but now is an, uh, a field absolutely open because there are many uh, trajectory of research, but not an, a unitary one. And this book is beautiful because he tried to, to take uh, uh, together all the, the issues. And, uh, but at, at time, I don't know, but they, they don't. <laughs> no, uh, how what, what what are the issues of these? But it's evident that uh, the possibility to explain, we we all uh, uh, we said that uh, mutation are uh, devoted to uh, an error in transcriptions of the DNA, and then there is a selection, natural selection. But what happens? How it happens? This selection? Maybe it is linked with. Uh, these epigenetic uh, modifications, but th it, it is really something that is uh, 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 working now. They are working on that now. The second is very interesting and very, very more difficult, difficult question. <coughs> you know, the, the, the last year I was at Epine speaking about apoptosis. And the methylation is connected with, in, uh, with the question of the signal to uh, suicide signal. Uh, the suicide signal, but we can't explain now apoptosis, but that is essential in the differentiation of the shell, in the architecture of the body, or the body. There are the cells that have to give a sign uh, the other cell, and that means you have to die, you have to disappear, cell and group of cell. This is the theory of apoptosis or suicide cellular. And it is a phenomenon of methylation, the apoptosis. Then I, I think that I can, uh, uh, at the end, take uh, together this part with the part that I do the last year. The question of sacrifice, I have to, to work on it. I, I don't like to uh, say something improvisational because it's more complicated. Amizen, uh, that is the biologist that uh, did this important discovery in, in the apoptosis, all, uh, in all his book, the beautiful book, the, the, is not translated in English. We have to do uh, La Sculpture du Vivant. Every time he says, uh, be careful with metaphor, be careful with metaphor. But we are speaking uh, exactly on that. Then we have to, to work. This is not sufficient to say, be careful uh, with metaphor using the metaphor. No, we exactly, uh, Derrida show us that uh, on Jacob. Then I'm, I'm very interested, but I don't have a, a good answer. Thank you, but because this is the, the topic problem. And thank you, Francesco, for this extremely rich and fascinating presentation, and especially for reminding us of the, these um, really strange conjunctures of information sciences being invented right at the moment when um, uh, the genetic code was identified of Jacob um, uh, coming into contact with uh, structuralism, one could continue this, this series um, of um, the AIDS epidemic arriving at the moment that um, biology was able to explain retroviruses um, or now epigenetics and our thinking about new mechanisms of inheritance. So I try to allude to um, um, brain plasticity and mm -hmm. uh, the flexibility of everything in yes, contemporary this is culture. Step the, the question arises what to conclude from these observations and conjunctures. Um, because I, I hesitate, although I like this reading a lot, I hesitate 
um, to, to, to jump on your conclusion that actually Derrida is a better biologist. Um, <laughs> Um, so certainly, I agree that um, s we there's there's a need to get in dialogue with scientists and to better understand what scientists are doing than most of them usually understand. Um, what well, I'll just say once described as a spontaneous yeah. philosophy of of scientists, but th I think that's also somehow Ian's question. Um, there's another kind of scientism lurking here, us jumping on new theories that so nicely um, work along our allies, fulfill our needs um, of bridging between nature culture, for example. So um, the, um, the, 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 my question is what actually, what, what are the lessons to be, to be learned from this I'm, I feel tempted to say constellations in a Walburgian um, sense. Thank you. There are many, I think, issues. Uh, I, I can say that, for example, I, I absolutely don't believe, we, we are speaking about that yesterday, I absolutely don't believe in, bit in, uh, in the uh, boundaries between uh, sciences and philosophies. Uh, philosophies and biology uh, overall biology is absolutely rooted in uh, philosophy the, the, at, at the attempt to the Jacob attempt to emancipate biology from philosophy is uh, clearly an issue is that evident failed because he, he, he has to use uh, uh, it is impossible don't use notion that came from uh, philosophical uh, tradition, but philosophy has been biology, has been mathematics, I absolutely don't believe. Then an issue is that we can uh, uh, come back to uh, not a unity or a community I don't like, but to establish a platform to, to speak each other. Uh, this, I appreciate exactly for the same reason your paper, no? Because I think there is not a restoration of the uh, uh, sovereignty of the philosopher, not that I can explain uh, to the biologist, no? the regional ontology, I, am, I have the general ontology, like Heidegger, no? and, and you do the, the little ontology. No, but to open a, a, a place, a platform, where it's possible to have a, a exchanges. Because I think that a scientist that works in laboratory needs metaphor, needs conceptuality, needs to renew of conceptuality in, in his works, for example. And at the same time, in philosophy, and I think more in philosophy, we have to uh, import uh, complexity that came from sciences, from physics, from... We are... In, this is a big problem in Italy. I don't know in uh, Anglo-Saxon world. But, uh, but in Italy, the philosopher uh, looks as, at science uh, like uh, evil. No? Ah, science don't think. Technique don't think. Science don't... Only Heidegger thinks. <laughs> I, I'm absolutely not agree because there are many possibilities to in this exchange on, on both sides. We can, uh, I don't know, I have friends that works at the CERNs and now he's trying to explain me that they are thinking in 12 dimensions. No? And this is, we have to understand what, how it is possible. And at the same time, I explain him what is differentiality. And, and, and he was really happy because, ah, yes, it's perfect for, for me because I can explain better the question of 12 dimension of space, 12 that can became in few time more and more and more and more differentiation. This is a, an issue. In, in my little framework, the book that I have to publish before the editor kill me, is that I, 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 I wouldn't uh, sustain that Derrida was a Lamarckist, no? Because, uh, sorry, uh, because all the 
the reader, ah, yes, Derrida is a Lamarck, it's, uh, it's something absolutely not useful, uh, something old. And, and then it, is, it, is, it was important to, for me to demonstrate that. Another issue for Bernard in the, our context that this epigenetic uh, research could support his idea that the techniques is not, is not a supplement in conventional means of supplement, but is a supplement in the Ridian meanings of supplement. That means that techniques constitute the, the living. And Kuhl really intervenes not only in our behavior, exterior, social behavior, but Kuhl create a, modifi a mutations. And uh, it was something that, uh, you know, I, I'm honest, I didn't believe <laughs> to you. But, if, but I, when I don't believe, <laughs> I have to study and understand. And then I, I think that is very important because what you, you are doing, I think, is really supported by this, this question. Uh, overall, on the, on the question of the digital technology, no? I think, because I, I begin to be absolutely agree with you that they are changing radically the, the, our li uh, living constitution, not only behavior, social behavior. Three issues. Are a lot. Oh, Ricardo, I'm waiting for you. Uh, of course. Well, I learned from Derrida uh, to pay attention to margins. So I have to mar dealing with two marginal issues in okay. your paper. Uh, a sentence, a, a wonderful sentence, legalizing a clandestine metaphysics. Well, I wonder if we could use this sentence in a more general way. If I think to the way Latour um, construed the, uh, the practice of discovery as um, a construction of a path, and at the moment of discovery, the erasure of this path. Uh, if we consider this dynamic, probably legalizing a clandestine metaphysics is, is a wonderful description of the practice of science in the singular in a, yes. uh, on my uh, suggestion to Ian. Uh, the second thing is uh, more specific. Uh, I need you to work as a medium in a spiritic science because I want to ask Derrida <laughs> something. <laughs> so uh, the argument uh, against, uh, let me say, against Jacob uh, 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 was based on two associations. The association of allogos with genetic memory. Mm with nervous memory. Well, I would be curious to understand what is the nature of this association. It that, this is, this uh, is it, the it's, it's not so plain. If you, uh, in, in the first case, Alogos uh, uh, is linked uh, to genetic memory by Jacob. Yes. Yes, it's shut exactly Jacob. But in the second case? It's always uh, Jacob, because the analogy in Jacob works that the uh, genetic memory that is not logos works like a logos because is, uh, it implies code, message, translation is a, a, a Derrida because all, all the, the first point, uh, thank you very much, but the, this beautiful definition is not mine, uh, Derrida. It, it, uh, and I absolutely agree with you and Derrida too. Uh, but the, the, the second question is more important. The, 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 the Derrida says we uh, knowledge that the functioning of genetic memory, when today, today that we can recognize that the allogos, what was until now, allogos now, as an effect of the introduction of cybernetics in biology, now is logos. Not, this is an appropriation. This is the, the functioning in, uh, of the analogy, according to Derrida, of the analogy in metaphysics. That means that you have a strange uh, relationship because one 
terms of the relationships, logos, defines the relationships, then this relationship is not really a relationship, is a capture. Analogy is to reduce, always to reduce to the logos something that is not logos. This is uh, extremely clear in uh, white uh, mythology. And thus, this is it. And Derrida says that establish analogy is um, a strategy to prevent, to recognize differentiality, because it presupposes that there, are, there is a, an ontological opposition between the terms, but they create this opposition, they establish. And in Plato, this is absolutely evident. No? Oh, I, I think so. In pharm Plato's pharmacy, there is a big analogy. The question, not casually, was posed um, with the example of the, of the body, no? the organism. And then, it, and it, what is really interesting, that this analogy between Logos and body was grounded on the uh, science, science, the cause school of uh, medicine. Okay, now a very short remark uh, by Bernard, and then the shortest, <laughs> the shortest coffee break of this uh, conference. Then uh, the shortest. <laughs> they want me not to speak. So <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just first to thank you, thank you. a lot. That's clear. And uh, to open a question for uh, next time, maybe the next time uh, uh, waiting by uh, Gerald. Um, the question is, what about the processal processuality of, of life after all of that? And uh, what about uh, life uh, apprehended like retention and potential? by Derrida in grammatology, and what about also life before sexual differentiation and all mm. these processes uh, which are uh, creating a, a history of life. And, uh, this is not a question for now, but just for opening uh, a next step, if you, if you will. Well, I can only to say this, this seminar is a, a bomb, Bernard because there is a part on exactly on this question of sexuality, differentiation and sexuality that is incredible. And uh, then we have, we have to, to speak. I, I'm working exactly on, uh, on that, starting from Monday. <laughs> Thank you very much. Please join me in thanking Francesco for his lecture.